They say, Dr. Damina knows the Bible. It's only that he's not humble. I humble myself. I humble myself. If you don't believe that Jesus is not the killer, you are antichrist. I am speaking to you in a humble way. You are antichrist, the papa of antichrist. Antichrist is not one man. Antichrist is a body of men. So if you are waiting for one antichrist that will rule the world, it's a fallacy. It's not in the Bible. And the antichrist is not coming. The antichrist is already here. Let's go back to your school fees. What is antibiotics? Against biotics, okay? So what is antichrist? So anybody that is against Christ, what is he? They are already around. Once you deny that Jesus is the father and you deny that Jesus is the son, you are antichrist. Humanity and deity of Christ. A denial of that. It makes that teaching antichrist. Any teaching in any church that denies that Jesus is God, that whole church teaching is antichrist. Any teaching in a church that denies that Jesus, who is God, became a man, that teaching makes that whole church antichrist. A church must teach Christ as God and Christ as man for the purpose of redemption. That is what makes it sound doctrine. Accepting the redemptive sacrifice and accepting the deity of God in the man Christ Jesus. That makes it sound Bible teaching. You don't need antichrist to teach you. You don't need a man that denies the deity of Christ or the humanity of Christ to be your teacher. When we talk about antichrist, antichrist is all over the place. And the antichrist is with us. We are living with us. Antichrist is not coming from anywhere. And we are not waiting for any antichrist. They are in churches, they are in our communities, and also they are in the place we found ourselves everywhere. Any person who does not believe in Jesus Christ is an antichrist. And any person who is having a new God in his mind, but is not a God of scriptures, and does not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, is also an antichrist. So you need to be very careful about people you follow. We'll let you understand that there is God. Immediately you tell them that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, they'll get back off to defend it. Some utterly say that they believe in him, but inwardly they don't believe in him. I'm going to show you a quick video from Dr. Ibadamna. He was trying to let us understand the Antichrist. You see, look at how many years they were misrepresenting God in offering sacrifices. So a man can be in Christianity serving the wrong God for 50 years. A man can be a Christian serving a God that only exists inside his head for 40 years. Look at how many years they were serving God backwards. They thought they were serving God. And God said, no, I've never been in this thing you guys are doing. I'm not even aware you're doing anything. <laughs> That's why you should pay attention to what I'm teaching. So that you don't worship from afar. I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me near. No, here we don't draw. You are not worshipping from afar or you are worshipping in Christ. Superstition all over the place. Superstition all over. Look at some churches, it's just superstition, superstition. Look at some Christians, it's just superstition, superstition. Worshipping a God they don't even know. Look at Hebrews chapter 9 verse 1 to 3. Pay attention. Hebrews 9, 1 to 3. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service. Look at what he calls it. And a worldly sanctuary. <laughs> a worldly sanctuary. <laughs> Next verse. <laughs> For there was a tabernacle made. The first wearing was a candlestick, table, shoe bread, which is called the sanctuary. Next verse. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. So they built a worldly sanctuary and constructed it like outer court, holy place, holy of holy, which is the holiest of all. And in their mind, God was living there. So nobody entered there because they said, if you enter, you will die. So they gave a picture of a killing God. Why should I see God and die? I should see God and live. But when you are in assumption, you fear God. Because you are not sure what you will get when you approach. 
So you stay from afar. When you have assumptions of God that are not scriptural. That's why in the New Testament there's no teaching on the fear of God. There's no teaching because that verbiage, fear of God in the Old Testament is not the same fear in your vocabulary today. So when they were saying fear of God in the Old Testament, they don't mean fear. No. It's language. So that's why in the New Testament, which is more current, nobody talks of fear. But people talk about the love of God shed abroad in our hearts. Then John will say, there is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. God doesn't want you to fear him. God wants you to be confident in his love. We have known the love that God has for us. We are confident in that love. When you are afraid of your father, you will never know your father. How many of you know your father by fear? Once you hear your father coming, you run. Once you hear your father, you and your father will never have a good relationship. If you are going to have a good relationship with your father, you must cross the barrier of fear and relate as friends then you and your father will get to know each other. In any relationship where there is fear, it can never be healthy. Quote me anywhere. If a relationship will be healthy, fear must be absent. Am I teaching here? Yeah. A wife that fears her husband, two of them can never gel well. A husband that fears his wife, they can never gel well. Husband and wife must go beyond fear and come to where they are naked and not ashamed where they are confident in one another, then they can have a solid relationship. But once fear is introduced, then everybody begins to act like a hypocrite. Pretense comes in. You begin to hide things. You don't see everything because fear is existing somewhere. God doesn't want you to fear him. That's why the Bible says, I will put my laws in their hearts. I will write them in their minds. I will be to them a God. And they shall be to me a people. And no man shall teach anyone to know the Lord. All of them shall know me because of what I have done in their heart. From the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their iniquities. And their sins I will remember again no more. So once that barrier is out, then you can approach God confidently. That is true worship. That is true worship. That is true worship. When he said they shall worship in spirit and in truth, that is true worship. <laughs> they built even a place inside. They call it holiest of all. That is God is there. And every year, the high priest will go in once after washing and showering and dressing and they will tie him with chain. And in the history, we never heard of one priest that died inside. Because God was never there. While they were doing all that ritual to enter the holiest, Moses was entering and coming out. One day, David and his boys were hungry. They entered in there and ate shoe bread. They entered there where the high priest should enter. David, that was not one, and his boys, to show you how useless the place was, and his boys, they entered and ate shoe bread and went free of charge. This same place that others were entering with fear. You see that? When you don't know God, when you don't know God, according to the scriptures, you have a God in your head that is not the God of the Bible. Am I teaching good? The revelation of Jesus beyond superstition. Look at that Hebrews chapter 9. It says that while the tabernacle was standing, the Holy Ghost said, look, there is no holiest of all here. Look at it, chapter 9 verse 7. <laughs> chapter 9 verse 7. But into the second when the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. So he offered both for himself first to be sure he will not die inside. Next verse. The Holy Ghost this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. God was not there he has never been there in that physical building. So because something has been done for years or practiced by Christians, doesn't mean it's the will of God. Because something is popular in the Pentecostal charismatics, because something is popular in the Orthodox Church, doesn't make it God. I don't care how long the age of a lie, it doesn't make it the truth. 
This is Israel year by year offering sacrifice, high priest, praying. Yet that was in the will of God. Jesus explains God. Don't miss that. Jesus explains God. Jesus explains God. Christ is the explanation of God. Christ corrects every misconception because there were misconceptions. Christ corrects every misconception in the law. In John chapter 14 verse 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There are not three things. I am the way, which is the truth, which is the life. That's the way it is. It's one thing. I am the way, which is the truth, that is the life. What do you mean? No one comes to the Father except by me. What do you mean, come to the Father? It means you can't see God outside Jesus. You cannot see God outside Jesus. Any attempt to see God outside Jesus, you end up in idol worship. You can never see God outside Jesus. Jesus explains God. In verse 9 of John chapter 14, the 14th chapter of John, the ninth verse, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father. I am in the Father, the Father is in me. So to see me is to see the Father. Jesus reveals God. Look at verse 20 of John 14. Oh, glory to God. John 14, 20. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. I'm in my Father. Ye in me, I in you. So the revelation of the church is to see God in Christ. The revelation of the church is to see God in Christ. In John 17 verse 3, This is life eternal, that they may know thee the only true God. Who is the only true God? That is Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is the only true God whom thou hast sent. Jesus Christ is the only true God. So eternal life means to know God in Christ. Eternal life means to know God in Christ. Look at 1 John, the 5th chapter, the 20th verse. 1 John, the 5th chapter, the 20th verse. And we know that the Son of God is come and had given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true even in his Son Jesus Christ who is he? This is the true God and eternal life. So Jesus is the true God no God outside Jesus Jesus reveals God. If you miss Jesus, you miss God. If you miss Jesus. Any opinion of God outside Christ is idol worship. Any opinion of God you have. Any opinion of God you have. Outside Christ is idol worship. That's the truth about God. The truth about God can only be found in his son. So every misconception in the Old Testament, every misconception, listen carefully, Power City, every misconception in the Old Testament from Sodom and Gomorrah, the flood of Noah, every seeming contradiction, like the scriptures we read, firewood, they kill him. Adultery, go free. Hmm? Temple, God said. New Testament, no such temple. I will give the temple. Old Testament, Manna from heaven. New Testament, no manna came from heaven. Every such contradiction, even the battle of I, the man that said, when I come back, the first thing that comes out, I will offer as a sacrifice. And his child came out. He took the child and offered as a sacrifice. All those are character assassinations of God. Because those characters don't know God. But today, we know God in Christ. 
And we don't see Christ demand for any of such actions. So we know that it was not God that was demanding for any of those actions. If you miss Jesus, you miss God. So all the misconceptions, the contradictions of the Old Testament will be corrected in Christ. All the misconceptions and the contradictions of the Old Testament will be corrected in Christ. Because the characters of the Old Testament, they were not God's personal revelation. Don't miss that one. The characters of the Old Testament, they were not God's personal revelation. They were third parties. The characters of the Old Testament were not God's personal revelation. They were third parties. Third party reportage. <laughs> because the character of the Old Testament, they were third parties. That is why what was most reliable, please don't miss this one, what was most reliable about their ministries were the promises they gave about Christ. What was most reliable about their ministries were the promises that they gave about Christ. So, you correct the impressions just like Jesus corrected Moses and Elijah. The Old Testament impressions of God are corrected by Christ just like he corrected Moses and he corrected Elijah. Jesus Christ is our Lord and personal Savior, whether we like it or not. Hold Him very well. Have faith in Him very well. Because you might not know the end time. You believe in Christ. Don't let someone tell you the other way around before you regret believing in Christ. Don't follow any pastor to confuse you. Because a lot of pastors out there, they don't even know who they are in Christ. All they know is maybe quoting the Bible and maybe explaining it to their own capacity of thinking. But they have to read the Bible and tell you exactly what the Bible is saying. But they maneuver to just convince you. Just be careful about those people. I'm going to show you another quick video from a lot of pastors in which they were sharing their opinion and also trying to let us understand about the Antichrist issue. What about pastors that pray for people to die and they die? They are in cooperation with Satan. Yes, sir. Paul was writing to the church in Romans, he said, but God commended his love towards us. He deployed his love towards us, that while we are yet sinners, think of that. Listen, I fear a man. I, will, I, I, I don't fear a man who killed his enemy. You know there are people who, they kill their enemy, they think they are superheroes. The man to really fear is somebody who killed his only son to save his enemies. Yeah. Jesus, the son of the living God, he pleased his father to bruise him. Not because he did everything wrong, he pleased the father. The father was happy to bruise him because of the love he has for you. How can you deny such love? That's why I know that, listen, at the end of the day, when we came come face to face with God, there is no area you will blame God for man who fails to be with him forever. There is no area because God, God has it all covered to ensure that everyone has the opportunity to be part of him. Everyone, there is no one that will have an excuse. It is him pursuing us. Jeremiah chapter 21, I mean 31 from verse 1 to 3. Jeremiah, look at what the ancient prophet says here. Jeremiah 31 from verse 1 to 3. Give it to me in New Living Translation, then give it to me message. At the same time said the Lord will, Lord will, as the same time said the Lord will, I be the God of all the families of the earth, Israel, and they shall be my people. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. This is what the Lord says. Those who survive the coming destruction will find blessings. Even the barren land. For I will give rest to the people of Israel. Next verse. Long ago the Lord said to Israel, I have loved you. 
before you were born my love is already deployed towards you i've loved you my people with everlasting love not partial not 10 percent not 90 percent everlasting cannot change your situation cannot change it even your bad behavior will not change it why because he is love everlasting love with unfailing love i have drawn you to myself can i hear loud amen look at it in message message i love it in message translation look at what it says jeremiah 31 from verse 1 in message quickly message translation not niv message and when that happens god's decree it will play as a son at the high noon i've been the god of every man woman and child of in israel and they shall be my very own people next verse this is the way god put it they found grace hallelujah out on the desert these people survived the killing israel out looking for a place to rest next verse this they were out looking for a place to rest they met god out looking for them they thought that they are the one looking for god but is the one looking for you the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world put it back i've not finished and I've, he said met god out looking for to god told them and he told them i've never quit and never will expect what expect judgment not expect hammer to drop on your head how can you deny and refuse such a love how can you i can of myself do not what i see my father do that i do if i see my father heal i heal if i see my father raise the dead i raise the dead my father never kills i don't kill so somebody says what about pastors that pray for people to die and they die they are in cooperation with satan yes, clean and direct even if they are watching <laughs> do you realize that even when there was an accidental discharge you know accidental discharge you know when you have a gun they have what they call accidental discharge when mistakenly the bullet is released when there was accidental discharge jesus fixed it you know what the accidental discharge was when peter chop off the ear of somebody just wait, 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 wait. my father doesn't remove people's ears he put it back to correct the record yes. that we are not here to tamper with human health we are here to restore health yes. my father does not kill yes. So when a man prays for people to die and are dying, who is answering his prayer? For the thief cometh not to kill. Exactly. So when you are sit and form a coalition, is that the right English? Form what? A coalition. Okay, so two of you are an agency in killing, stealing, and destroying. He said, I know myself, don't try me, I'm a man of God, I'm anointed with oil. If you try me, you'll die in the afternoon. No, that is not the way the Father functions. He said, but I am come, that you may have what? That you may have life and that you may have it how? Abundantly. That's what my Father does. That's what I do. My father will heal the sick, I heal the sick. My father will raise the dead, I raise the dead. My father will cleanse the lepers, I cleanse the lepers. My father will forgive sinners, I forgive sinners. Yes, sir. I can of myself do nothing. What I see my father do, that I do. Why? Because Jesus is the father manifest. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Jesus is the father manifest. How do we know that? He said, I am my father. I want meaning I am the physical expression of the father. So when you see me physically in operation, exactly what you see is exactly what the father is operating like. What about churches where they pray for people to fall and die? It's an agency of Satan. Because the father doesn't want anybody to perish, but that all native doctor, witches and wizards, evil people, that all didn't he say, I have no delight in the death of the wicked? So why should a pastor be praying for people to die when he should be getting people saved? That reveals who the pastor is working for. Whoever you are working for, you must do what he does. I can of myself do nothing. What I see my boss does, I do. Did you good? Yes, sir. The day I will pray to bless killers will not make me on this earth. No. No. My job is to pray against them. No. No. We just make ourselves miss me to the enemy. Miss me to the enemy. Miss me to the enemy. It's time to walk in the light of God. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. It's time to walk in the light of God. This God keys and he makes a life. First Samuel chapter 2, number 6. A. Allen taught me that 79. The Lord killed him and he makes it alive. He brings it down to the grave and he brings out. It depends on which side you want to fall. God loves you so much. If you've not repented, please repent. Because the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Don't just wait that, oh, I'm just waiting. I'm confused. I don't know the truth, religion, and all those things. You can keep on saying all those things. It's your own choice. But the earlier, the better. All the religion are there. And I've studied it for myself, and I know that Christianity is the best religion. Christianity is not even a religion. Christianity is a relationship between man and God. There are a lot of people thing they know in which the devil is using them accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and personal Savior so that your name can be written in heaven thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you another time